Today in part three of the three-part series, we are going to mount this uh, Servo GX, uh, DIY Servo GX and run all of the cables and get it running. Hi folks, I'm Roger from Offgrid and in this episode we are mounting our Raspberry Pi, which is a DIY Servo GX. Uh, we're going to mount it over here, so that's the way it goes. So this is where we have chosen to mount it. We've done a bit of a DIY enclosure. We're running this uh, USB to power it, uh, which will be going behind this photo going there, and then another USB extension coming up here. So let's get to it. So today, this is my friend, and this is a, a fish system where fishing wire system. We're going to run this. It's got to go basically, it comes down inside here, it's going to go across here and through a little channel there and come into the guts of the batteries and, and everything else over there. That's where all our electrics are. So I'm going to run it as neatly as we possibly can and this is our friend. All right, so you can see there we've got the fish wire going in past the duct there. So there's quite a lot of wiring that runs in sort of the same gap there under the floor here. And we have fed it out and it's coming out here. So we're going to tape the USB onto the end there and then try and feed it back through here to the electric cupboard. Okay, we've got the USB extension taped onto the end of the fish line here. So we're gonna try and feed it through. It's a bit of a, I think it's gonna be a bit of a dog to feed through there because obviously it's got the, quite a big plug on there and it's a pretty small gap. So you're gonna have to work it quite carefully to get it through here. So we've got our plug all the way to this point here, which is a little bit fiddly to get it past this duct here through that gap. So we're gonna have to just work it through there carefully and uh, then crack on. Got this through here. So coming up with the rest of the wiring there. So this is probably the hardest bit was getting this up here. So now that's done. We can then feed the rest of the wire. Uh, it just runs under the floor there. Uh, it's gonna go up through a gap into that locker there and then up behind there, behind the picture and up to where we're gonna mount the GX touch. There's always the little fiddly bits we trying to feed wires through different spots. But um, it's coming out that gap there. Just for interest, we did not cut that hole. That was like that when we bought it. Somebody took a hacksaw to it. By the looks of it, it's a bit of a hack job. Uh, but yeah, got the wire coming behind that trim there. This is what's going to power the Raspberry Pi. Pass it up behind this picture. So this picture is permanently mounted. And then it's up here to where we're going to put the Pi. Okay, let's just power the Pi. I'm going to leave this hanging now. Okay. So we're just going to leave this hanging here for now, just uh, temporarily. Um, this little USB 12 volt thingy here is what is going to power the Pi from that USB. And uh, that's in the enclosure already plugged in. We've just plugged everything in there. So now we are going to plug in these two guys into this uh, USB port. USB hub. hub even and uh, we're going to plug in the MPPT and the smart chunt into the extension that we've just laid and we're just going to test and make sure everything connects up and works correctly and uh, once we've done that we'll then tidy up the wiring mount the Raspberry Pi and uh, all that sort of stuff so yeah all right um, so we're going to plug these into the MPPT and the smart chunt which are a little bit fiddly um, but not too not too bad actually not the worst. Sometimes these bits are the bits that hit the most fiddly when you're doing an install. Let's see here. Okay, that's in there. Put that into the hub here. And uh, which side is this one? It's on the side here, isn't it? Where is it on here? Is it? Okay, so this is then going to go in there. That was pretty painless and straightforward actually. Uh, and then this goes into here as well. And then this goes 
to here. Okay, turn this guy on. And solar showing and our smart shunt which is what we wanted to see so we have three three watts coming in here which is probably about right at point four of an amp but the batteries are fully charged so it's not going to be doing very much cool so that all works now we can mount it properly and tidy everything up that's what's in to say there yeah Tidying up here, screwing in the little things to cable tie to, get it as neat as possible. And some more tidying up going on down there, where really get everything neat and out of the way. Okay, so we've chased the wire along this loom that runs through there, and then this way it runs through the gap under the floor. So we've just tidied that up, up against what's there already. So before we actually uh, complete all the tidying of everything, let me just uh, run through everything that's had. This is for anybody that not watched the first of the, of the first two series of the series. So we have it mounted here in this uh, DIY. Um, uh, enclosure we have a Raspberry Pi sitting at the back with a touch screen in front of it so this is fully interactive it's got GUI mods installed so you can actually click on that and see some detail uh, you could click on that and see some detail there so uh, we don't have a Multiplus here or, or a Victron inverter so these have disappeared with GUI mods if you don't have something plugged in it actually disappears which is quite nice so this is what Nigel wants to see this is giving him enough decent info so this is the state of his battery and this is the state of his uh, solar and it's connected to VRM so he can actually see it online he can go from the comfort of his armchair to see exactly what his batteries are doing he'll be setting alarms on VRM so that he can monitor his engine battery and things like that so we go two cables uh, so the first the thin one is powering it so it's going to just a standard uh, USB, 12 volt USB cigarette lighter thing. Um, the second one is a very good quality, what's it, three meters, five meters? Three meters. Three, three meter USB extension, very good quality cable. You don't want to skimp on, on the quality there. And this is running down through the guts here. It's going under the floor there. Um, comes through under the floor here and it comes out here so we're about to tidy this up but i thought i'd just take you through everything first so this is a standard anchor usb hub plugged into this usb extension um, so you don't need to power this um, just a three meter extension and then coming out of here we've got two v direct cables uh, v direct to usb cables and one of them is going to the uh, solar controller over here and the other is going to the smart shunt uh, next to the battery there so that's 
pretty much the minimal insulation that most people would have. They'd have a shunt to tell them the state of the battery and, and probably an MPPT. Uh, we're not sure how much longer we're going to have this vehicle, so we're not going to install the MultiPlus at this point in time. Um, but if we knew that we were going to have this for 10 years or more, whatever, we would definitely install the MultiPlus or at least a Victron inverter, and then we'd be able to get a load more information. But that's the setup. We'll show you when it's fully complete, everything tied it away, just for interest. But uh, yeah, just thought I'd take you through all the detail of it. So this housing is actually a temporary uh, solution and uh, it's made with three and a half mil ply that I simply cut and glued. It's, it's working fine but uh, we've had um, some nice feedback from uh, guys that have watched some of the previous uh, episodes and, and other, other releases and, and they've offered to print a decent 3D printed housing that goes around this so we're quite keen to pursue that as a possibly a permanent solution uh, but the ply works okay and is kind of okay but it would be really nice to have a, a really snazzy 3D printed housing what do you guys think so there we've done it we've uh, finished all the tidying up the install is complete so here is our DIY Serba GX using a Raspberry Pi. I'll run you through all of the costs of everything. The, um, the Pi itself sitting behind the screen here is roughly £50 from one of the standard um, Pi shops and they have come back into stock now so easy to get hold of. This uh, touch screen which is mounted, which the, the Pi is mounted onto is about another £50. So you're talking about £100-ish for the Pi with the screen. We then have a fairly good quality USB cable that's about £10, a three, 3 meter extension. Um, <clears throat> this is a very inexpensive um, power cable because it only needs to be one meter, so this is only a few pounds, so call it about five pounds-ish. And then uh, coming back to here, <coughs> we come from the extension to the hub and uh, there are two V direct cables. So we, we think that the total cost of everything uh, is well under £200 because the hub is probably £10-ish and probably the most expensive of these are these two V direct to USB cables that we have there and they are £30 each. Um, but they can be made for a fraction of the of the price uh, So literally two three pounds or less than five pounds each you can make them yourself and they're pretty easy to make We'll be doing another episode with uh, how you actually make those and um, <clears throat> Hopefully hopefully you find this really useful Remember if you look in the links below uh, there is a link to a document which has uh, the full details of all of this so we've we built a document with a, a great amount of detail, very detailed. Uh, it should be a one-stop shop where you can you can go to that document and get absolutely everything that you need, all the info you need. You know uh, how to install the OS onto the card, how to uh, configure it, how to link to VRM, how to um, even how to make up your cables and everything. We've got all of that uh, in the document, but we will be doing a future episode where we cover specifically that cable and how you do that. Because there are, it, it's easy to make a mistake there. Sometimes it can result in smoke. So we'd rather you actually look at that and see how you do it and uh, take it from there. So hopefully uh, that's useful to you. Remember to uh, like and subscribe. And as I said, check the link below for that detailed document that we have of this install. Cheers folks.